engineer Mike and is going to talk to us and tell us what they normally do. Engineer Michael, thank you very much for giving us your time today. Uh, first of all, let's start by introducing yourself. Give us a little bit uh, of background, uh, of your background as an engineer. Then talk to us about your team that we work with here and what you do and also mention some of the projects that have passed through your hands that you are proud of. My name is Michael, as he has said. So basically this is our electrical and electronics wing. So what we deal here mostly is, uh, I would say, prototyping. So prototyping is more or less the initial stages of formulating an idea from, let's say, a thought to an actualization. So our electrical space, mostly what we do is we try to actualize what you have come up with so as to give you a final product. So for us, what we have here is uh, we have electrical designers. So what we do is we have done a couple of projects. I would say one of more or less our famous projects is our projects that we done for the greenhouses. So there was a program for the KCB whereby they were making greenhouses. So we were part of the team that were trying to automate the greenhouses. So basically we were trying to uh, study the temperature, get the humidity, uh, basically be able to collect all that data and being able to put it in a platform whereby you can actually study it remotely. So basically if my greenhouse is in a different location and I'm here, I can actually be able to know the kind of temperatures that are there, the kind of humidity that is there and I can automate the pumps. So basically I can switch them on and off from a remote location. Yes. How would you describe the process of actually coming up with an electrical part uh, from scratch? I would say it depends on one, the functionality that you're trying to achieve. Remember, different components do different things. Let's say you're trying to something as small as move a motor. You need to understand what are the what are the components that you can use to integrate a motor. So basically for us, we work on a point of view whereby we know what you're looking for. So we have to find a way to integrate all these other things so as to be able to achieve your product. All right, so uh, what we have here is some of the components that we use or machines that we use to be able to achieve what you're looking for. So here we have a solder station. So the solar installation is what we use to attach the components on top of the board. As you can see here, there's a board that we are able to fabricate. So this is more or less a board that controls the greenhouse conditions. So this is whereby you get to mount your sensors. So the sensors you get to mount your chip and you also get to mount your GPS. So the GPS is whereby you use the communication. So basically from where the sensors are to where you are right now. So some of these are the projects that we have been working on. So this is one of them. This is another one. It's a project that helps us to more or less monitor. It's an ATM sanitary pad dispenser. So basically this is a control board that allows us to be able to achieve such a situation. So for us to be able to make a PCB board, that's a printed circuit board, we have to undergo a sequence of processes so as to be able to achieve that. So first thing first, we start with an empty copper board, which is looking like this. So we have to undergo a sequence of events that has help us to be able to get your board into this particular state. So here is whereby we are having the dark room. The dark room, we call it a dark room because we are using a photosensitive paper for us to be able to actualize what we have here. Because remember, we have to be able to transfer the design and the artwork from being just a paper to actually being able to be printed on the board. That's why it's called a printed circuit board. So here we have some of the machines that help us to achieve that. Here we have uh, our laminating machine. So this is whereby it helps you to paste the paper to the board. Then we have the exposure. The exposure now helps you to transfer the artwork from the design itself all the way to the board. Then we have the developing machine, and then we have the oven. So all these machines more or less help us to achieve what we are looking for. My name is Njungawa Mora. 
I'm an electrical and electronics engineer here at Gearbox Europlacer. This facility is used to assemble PCBs, which are commonly known out there as motherboards. A PCB is a copper board that looks like this, and uh, components, electrical components that are, for example, resistors, capacitors, inductors, are placed on this board so that it can do its functionalities. So the process of assembly starts at this printing machine here. It's called a speed print. At this point, solder paste is applied onto the board before the components are placed on it. So the PCB is placed on this conveyor which feeds the machine. And inside the machine, we do have a stencil which is specific for this board. Each different PCBs have their own specific uh, stencil. So you cannot use one stencil on many uh, PCBs. It's PCB specific. So the PCB, the stencil has apertures which allow the paste to be applied only on the pads, which are the silver pads that you're seeing on this board only. And then from there we go to the next step where we have our pick and place machine. is a mysterious illness that is rising not just in our country but also globally. Cancer is a situation whereby in the body, the cells of the body keep on multiplying and dying. So there is that kind of uh, check and balance that some cells will die, others will be formed, others will die, others will be formed. So when this mechanism fails is where you have overproduction of these cells. The information is power. And the only way we can prevent and manage this cancer is by knowing that it exists. So awareness is the first part of uh, management of cancer. We are privileged to bring you a fine dining experience right in your kitchen and your dining table. So today we are going to be making grilled lamb chops served with a butternut puree with an accompaniment of roasted or rather grilled cucumber and uh, onions. So get your recipe book and let's get cooking. Access to knowledge, solution to unanswered questions. Guidelines to pursuing your rights. And repossessing your property, intellectual or material. For stability, ignite prosperity. Cut through Dingus and the new narrative, terming him as a conman. Riley kick starts his as a new campaigns in the capital, Nairobi.
160 Bulgarian tourists jet in Mombasa, gracing the economy of the island. Kandro employs measures to curb animal hunger in arid and semi-arid areas. Paul Kamau. I'm an electrical engineer here at Gearbox Europlacer. I am in charge of the technical aspects of the production line you see here, which includes programming, maintenance, and production scheduling. So what you're seeing here, this machine, is called a pick-and-place machine. So a pick-and-place machine picks components from the cuts you, hear, you see here, and it places them on the board that is inside the machine, in there. So, uh, once the board comes from the printing machine, it is fed into the pick and place machine, which cl cl uh, clamps the board at the middle there and starts placement. The machine has a throughput of around 14,000 components per hour which means that for an average board of about 100 components, you'll be able to do 140 boards per hour. Now, uh, the machine has eight cuts. So you can see uh, there are three cuts on the front. You can only see two. There's another one there, it's a spare cut. And at the back position, we have allowance for four cuts. So this machine is a high mix, low volume machine. That means uh, we can be able to do, it is a versatile machine. It can do plenty of designs, but at the expense of the throughput of the machine. Of course, it has a high throughput. If you consider uh, it is throughputting around 14,000 components per hour. But uh, there are machines out there in the field that can do up to 100,000 components per hour. That is why this one is not a high volume machine. It is, uh, it is suitable for prototyping environment. Yes. So, once uh, placement is done, the board is fed into the reflow oven via that conveyor you're seeing there. where uh, the solder paste is, uh, is heated to a temperature of around 270 degrees Celsius, which makes the components adhere to the board and make that electrical connection. The machine has an onboard electrical tester, which uh, is this green, this gold plate you can see here, this one. This is an electrical tester. So it's an in-circuit electrical tester. So this machine is an intelligent machine that can place components and test the values for those components before placement. Once uh, placement is done, the board is fed into the reflow oven via that conveyor you're seeing there. Where uh, the solder paste is uh, is heated to a temperature of around 270 degrees Celsius, which makes the components adhere to the board and make that electrical connection. After the board is ejected out of the pick and place machine, it is fed into the reflow oven. The reflow oven is the final, is the last machine in the automate of the automated production line, where the solder paste that was placed in the first machine is melted to a temperature of about 270 degrees, whereby uh, it melts and makes the electrical connection between the component that was placed here and the board. So the reflow oven is, um, is a very heavy duty machine uh, because uh, because of its high temperature requirement. 
So when a boat comes in here, uh, the oven has about seven zones. So the zones are, there's the first zone here, the seventh zone is on the other end. So temperature ramps up from room temperature here all the way to 270 degrees in the middle and then it starts to cool down to around 60 degrees Celsius at the end. So that by the time the board is coming out of the oven, number one, it can be handled by an, an operator and number two, the solder paste will not be, it will be solid. It will not have the consistency it had in the beginning at the first machine. So, after the reflow oven process, the boards are brought to this solder station, solder station table, where we solder the through hole components. As, as you can see, the board has two different types of components on it. The surface mount components that were placed during the process that we've just seen, and through hole components, which have to be hand soldered. So this is the station where we hand solder the components using our soldering stations. Uh, we have a different uh, equipment here like the solder smoke absorber and the solder absorber to help us with that work. Before we do anything at the soldering station, we have to strap ourselves onto the table to ensure that we are uh, ESD protected using our wrist strap. The wrist strap uh, ensures that the, uh, elect, uh, the static charges in my body are grounded into the earthing system so that I do not uh, damage uh, components which are uh, sensitive to static charges. The boards have been assembled in the assembly table and all the through hole components have been placed. The board is brought to the rework station. So we have two stations on this table. This is a rework station and this one is a testing and documentation station. So in a rework station, what we do here, sometimes we have components that have been wrongly placed by the machine. Uh, so we have to redo them here manually. So there is hot air and there is a soldering gun. So the hot air will take care of the SMD components, which means surface, surface mount uh, components. You remove them and replace them as per need. Once we validate that the rework has been done correctly, now the board is pushed to the testing and documentation station. So in the testing station, you can see we have a, a microscope. So this microscope is not a high power microscope. It has only a magnification of about 10 times or 20 times maximum. So we use that to to see the, even the smallest component, including the 01005 footprint. Uh, then we have, this is a voltage, this is a power supply, and on the far end there is an oscilloscope. So uh, once the tests are done, they are entered into the system, the machine here, and after that is done, the client is uh, is welcome to come and pick up his board. A lot of these startups that are developing their products here locally, solving the challenges that we face every day have to send their designs overseas to China or to India for those products to get manufactured. Then wait for those products to, to get sent back home. That length of time has a direct impact in the resources that these companies have in trying to scale their products. By having or providing local manufacturing, we are now able to reduce the time that it takes to go from prototype into market, reduce the amount of resources required, and provide very quick turnaround support for these startups. Many of the people studying engineering, when they have good ideas, those ideas never become products. And most of the products we consume in the country come from outside 
uh, the country or some select industries within the country that have certain advantages. This is a time when we were thinking, of, we're thinking how to set this up, that we were seeing a lot of success within the IT space. A lot of people with good ideas in universities and outside in Kenya who had good ideas were able to convert those into apps, for example, so fintech and so on, riding on M-Pesa, riding on IoT and all these developments that are taking place globally. And so Kenya became known as the Silicon Savannah. So we felt that engineering was missing out. Uh, here at Gearbox, uh, we are unique in the sense that uh, we have equipped our workshops, uh, both mechanical and ele electronics, uh, with equipment that's necessary for, for the piping. Um, currently, I'm seated at the mechanical workshop, where we have a number of uh, digital fabrication uh, machines, some of which uh, we've designed and manufactured uh, them here locally in the country. This is where we deal with most of the metal works. So we have plasma cutters, we have a milling machine. This is one of our bandsaws, and what happens is that it's currently working on a project for cutting uh, sheets of metal. And this uh, guy is actually making a machine in the process. Kunja body is Swahili for, for bending. Uh, kunja is bent and bought because the machine itself is it's it's an industrial robot. Um, so the machine itself is a, it's an automatic pipe bending machine. And uh, the inspiration behind it was I was trying to achieve repeatability. Uh, something that I've seen uh, and observed that was lacking in the Juakali, uh, you know, sector. Our idea is, as I said, you make a good prototype and test it in the marketplace with a pilot, and we therefore have machines available that people can come uh, and use without having to buy. So that's a very important part of what Gearbox avails to the innovator. The innovator otherwise would need to be able to raise the money to have the machines in place in their, in their workshop, wherever it might be, to then start production, and that's a huge barrier to starting, much more so than, for example, somebody doing software, which in that case, you all you need is to know how to code, have a good computer and good internet connect connection, and you're able to set up and go. But with hardware, what we can call broadly hardware, which means tangible things, uh, is a lot more difficult to make that uh, happen. Within Machine Africa, we have the maker spaces. Where you are currently is a maker space, and you can see so many equipment all around and products that are being developed. So we give access, uh, we use the machinery that we have here to be able to make production, but for commercial purposes and for mass market purposes. We strive to maintain gender balance in the engineering space, which here in Kenya is predominantly male dominated, to also have persons who are living with disabilities one of our technicians is Mr. Paul. He not only works and supports the able-bodied beneficiaries, but also works hand in hand to ensure that we get good products and we can get innovators regardless of the state of ability or disability of the beneficiaries. For the people who then want to come in and use the equipment, we decided to pivot from our original gym-like model to uh, Gearbox Academy. So in Gearbox Academy, we went further than the safety and basic use training that, we did, that I already described for the gym model and said, why don't we look at what's happening in the world today where the backdrop to what we're doing is the fourth industrial revolution. And the Academy is all about imparting hands-on practical skills uh, through Industry 4 Technologies and Human Center Design. Our goal is to build a society of skilled engineers who are able to come up with solutions which lead to product development and building tech enterprises. The entire world is going through uh, such a rapid pace of development in terms of technology that uh, if we don't get onto, onto uh, technologies that are considered to be future-facing, then the gap between the economies in Africa and the developed world, the technologically developed world, is going to continue to grow. And so we determined that uh, because of the kinds of people we have here and the knowledge that they have, we'd begin by really focusing on those kinds of technologies that are future-facing. It includes things like embedded systems, which implies you're embedding a computer into some kind of a device. Uh, and you know, your car has a lot of computers. 
uh, modern fridge has lots of computers, washing machines. So embedded systems are all over us right now. And so we're teaching people how to embed a computer into a system to make it automated, to make it more efficient, to make it reactive to its environment and so on. So that's a very big part of what we do. Um, when you do that, you're getting a lot of data. So it's important to be able to understand how to process the data. So machine learning and artificial intelligence ride on top of embedded systems as well very well. So we teach that as well. Uh, when you're designing, again, you want to use very modern tools. So you want to design whatever product you have in mind using your computer, using a tool called computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacture. So that is a digital design tool. So digital design and fabrication is another course that we teach because the tools that we use to actually make whatever it is that you've designed on the computer are then driven by the computer. So you get precision, you get speed, efficiency, and so we teach that as well. And that really is the way that uh, product production is going on around the world. And if you think about that, you contrast what we have in Kenya with what Juakali, in terms of what Juakali does, for example, the informal sector, the informal sector will tend to be able to have um, products that are not uniform, not repeatable, and not efficiently made, productivity is very low, and yet they continue to be an important part of the economy. So the kinds of courses that we, we teach help people to be able to enable even the Juakali sector to be able to become formal, because then they'll be able to make products that can be accepted by supermarkets, uh, and so on and so forth. So that's an important element, being able to make the engineers that we train here better suited to, to, to our own uh, marketplace in this country. Well, that marks the end of our tour at Gearbox. As usual, I hope you've learned something new out of this episode. Remember to leave your comments and or suggestions on our social media handles at KUTV Kenya, both on Facebook and on Twitter. And every day we keep on reminding you, if you do have something or rather know someone who would not mind being uh, featured on Technovation Show, you can reach us through Gmail. That is technovationshow2020 at gmail.com. For this and previous episodes of Technovation Show, you can visit our YouTube channel. That is Technovation Show. My good name is Samson and until next time keep learning something new each and every day and as the French say au revoir and I'm out TV in conjunction with Kenyatta University Funeral Home is now offering death announcements immediately following our news bulletins at 7 p.m. At this sorrowful time, as you shine your 